Hello, scoundrels, scavengers, and scurvy dogs. My name is TV Skyne, and since my past self apparently did not have sufficient respect for our good friend Patches to consider him a boss worth talking about, I guess it falls to me to do the intro to this episode. Now, last time, we explored the area around Limgrave, messed around in some tombs, and then, yes, we ran into our old friend Patches. And as this episode opens, that basically remains the plan. Pastskind thinks that he's just gonna run around a bit, clean up some underexplored stuff in the Limgrave area, but he is in for a bit of a surprise. Okay, we found Patches. That's where he is. And he has a thing that would have been incredibly useful against Margit. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, hey, it's the guy. Ah, we meet again. To have fought Nereus and lived. You must have seen your share of battle. I am Yura, as you might recall. Hunter of bloody fingers. Tarnished, held in thrall by cessblood. Zealots, who stalk their own. You stay the path. You are certain to face more of them. Just remember. No kinship with their elk remains. Their madness precludes it. Cool hat. Don't let your emotions stay your blade. Be on your way. Perhaps we will meet again. If fate permits. Be on your way. Perhaps we will meet. Fair enough. All right. What else might... Actually, let's go take on the uh, Forlorn Hound. Like, we might be a little overpowered for him right now, but I want to know what I get for beating him. All right, round two. Yeah, Agile of three. Did he kill me twice or one time? I can't remember. Okay. Can't get too overconfident, I see. Way. There we go. Oh, I thought I got some ashes, but I guess I got a sword. Curved greatsword. Oh, it's like a dexterity-based greatsword. And it inflicts hella bleed. Okay. A curved greatsword with a gently undulating blade wielded by bloodhound knights. A fearsome blade capable of brutal airborne attacks. Cool. Can't really use it right now, but cool. Neato. Right. Do I want to go south? Or do I? I think I want to go... I think I want to go to this beach. Just to see. Make sure there isn't something I've missed. I want to clear out Limgrave. Like, I want to... Like, maybe not 100% it, because I imagine there's probably a lot of stuff here, but... I want to clear it out enough, at least. What? Oh, bats. Ah, oh, yeah. That was a little too far. Okay, gonna try it again with the cat's ring. And then I was fine, okay. Sorry about that. And that might let me... Just barely... Nope! Nope, that was another death fall. Okay. Oh, that's where it is. There is... There's the landing pad. Okay. So... Okay. Let's do it. 
There we go. Success! And now nothing's down here, right? Like, that's gonna turn out to be just a big nothing burger. Well, it seems like something's... Oh, hello. I remember you. I fought you in the... in Raya. Except you had spells there. Oh, you still do! You still do! Jerk! Ash of War, Gravitas. I guess that's the one he uses with his sword to pull me in. What a dick. Okay, so those guys aren't unique. They're like a type of guy. Who know that kind of magic, by the looks of it. But I guess there's nothing else, just an Ash of War, which I guess is useful enough. Okay. Let's go talk to whoever that guy is. Oh, right, it's the pompous dude. Yes, now allow me to furnish you with a little advice. I would take great care to avoid Godric's tarnished hunts were I in your shoes. That depraved lot are obsessed with sacrificing tarnished like you for the sake of grafting. Honestly, Godric's nothing more than a jumped-up country bumpkin. Lord? Oh, don't make me laugh. First, he hid himself amongst the women folk to flee the capital, then hid from Radan in that castle. Then he insulted Melania, lost to her in battle, only to lick her boots rather than die like a man. <laughs> Has he no shame? The big girl's blouse. And to think, he's the blood of Godfrey, last of the golden lineage. Though you almost wouldn't know it to look at him. Yeah. I almost feel sorry for the chap, the more I think of it. What are you waiting for? A kiss goodbye? My fort lies to the south, beyond the Mistwood. Take it back for me. Why are you here, though? Like, why are, of all the places you could be, why are you standing here? Okay, uh... I want to go get the map. Oh, that's large. Oh, that's very large. Is that a be be a guri? What is that? Okay. Been overpowered. So f it's a bear. Okay. It's like a mega bear. It's like an ultra bear. Yeah, hi. Okay. Hefty beach beast bone. Hi. This is probably dumb of me, but, uh... Oh, there's more than one! Run! I thought maybe they were unique, but no! No, 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 no. There's, there's like more than one of them. Oh, God. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Yes. All right. All right. Whoa, Jesus Christ. Well, I found a grace. That's something. Ah! Okay. The, the woods belong to the bears. I get the message. There's one walking around, and there's one lying down, and then there's that one walking around. Okay. Let me just uh, raid. Just kind of... Yoink. And then bye! Oh, Lord! There's three of them! Right where the map is, too. Me. Okay. I'm hearing the sound of... Oh, it's a refiller. Oh, minor air tree. Ah, 
I guess these like to hang out here. Spiked cracked tear green spill crystal. Hey, those are the things for the uh, for the uh, for the uh, for the um, um, the uh, the wondrous physic. Cool. We found a minor air tree, and it seems to have a dungeon attached. Maybe. Assuming there's a door on this thing. There is. There we go. Siofra River Well. Ooh, magic elevator. Very elvish. Very Elrond, very tall. This goes down a long way. Oh. Ooh. Ah. Wait, there's a town down here? I saw a city. I saw a town. Wait, go back up. I saw a... Oh, holy shit. Holy sh! Holy sh! Holy sh! Okay. Damn! I have not had that sense of scale with a video game for a while. Holy f! Didn't expect something incredible. Yeah, you f said it, pal. Holy sh! Well, that's pretty f amazing. Fear. Yeah, no kidding. This is kind of ter terrifying. It's so big you can write torrent down here. Okay. So it's not unoccupied. <laughs> I guess we figured. That message said, try circling around. So does that mean... This might be easier. I don't know, that still seems like a lot of guys. I'm getting a little bit fishing village vibes out of this. In the sense of... These guys seem fossilized, almost. Okay, yeah, definitely don't want to fight ten of these at once. But they also seem pretty preoccupied with their thing, so... Okay, they don't aggro too easy. That's nice, at least. Oh, uh, of course, the moment I say it! The moment I say it! That was a lot. A smithing stone four. That's pretty powerful. Try down hidden path ahead. How much further down can we go? Oh, okay. Oh, so he's saying try the jumping down into the elevator to find a hidden path. Okay. Press X to doubt that one, I think. I'm not sure I trust you. But okay.
Right, that would be the waterfall down below. I see. Yeah! Oh, you piece of sh- Golden centipede. Huh. Yeah, not much risk of them catching me as such. Oh, they're following me. They're just following me real slow. Okay, don't think it fa it's following me. Those are large dudes. So are they ghost dudes or are they just glowing dudes? Looks like ghost dudes to me mostly. Ill-omened creature ahead. No sh**. God damn, though. I mean... That's probably a good idea. Right? That's probably fine. Wait... That one wasn't on fire before, was it? Are we playing a game of light all the things on fire? Oh, and we're playing that game with crabs! Oh, goody. Oh, he's gonna make his way up here. Yeah. Hi. And I can't do damage to him worth a sh- Ow! Jesus. And he can take me out in two swipes. Rest, 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 rest! Yeah, fighting them, that's not gonna get me anywhere. Oh, a little group of deer. That's cute. Fighting them is gonna get me exactly nowhere. If they are not hostile by default... Behold, it's like a dream. Yeah, you're not kidding. Blood stain here, which makes me paranoid. Inverted hawk eater. 
The inverted hawk is the emblem of the company of slaves ordered to explore the Eternal City. Well, it's stats are slightly better, so... A map of the Siofra River. Oh, now... Elden Ring, you spoil me. That's a boss. That's definitely a boss. That's 100% a boss. Calling it now, that's a boss. Oh, hello. Hi. Don't seem happy to see me. This place is just amazing, though. Like... <laughs> They're still shooting at me. Dedicated. You can start to see the bottom of the cave. The vaulted cave ceiling. Okay. Okay, that might be a little further than Torrent can jump, but who's that over there? Hey, Stone Sword Key. Nice. Can't really see a way to get over there. Clearly there's a guy over there. And I want to talk to him. <laughs> Torrent? No! Oh, Jesus Christ. When you, when you summon it while you're moving, it sort of tries to keep momentum for you. So that you don't stop. Okay, this is a little precarious. Um, okay. Help. I mean, it's not like I can climb all the way down, well, can I? Right? Anything down here? Okay, I guess there's this, which is another dead end here. But a way to get back out of there. Okay, I thought I was screwed there. Dwelling arrow. Okay, that looks a little interesting. Arrow in which the spirits of small animals is thought to dwell. Deal magic damage. Oh, cool. I can't believe I got out of that one alive. Whoa. Gotta tell you, Torrent, that little... 
that little speed boost you do right when you I summon you. It's gonna get us into trouble. Whoa, okay. Actual sniper. I've got, like, a massive arrow sticking out of me. Oh, there's more than one of them. Oh, f*** me sideways. What the hell? Well, that's two. I guess I need to find two, four, six, eight of them in total. And then that'll do something. Man, I'm not even trying to fight you guys. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I also want to get my runes back. Whoa! Where the hell are they? Where are they? There. Me! These dickheads playing sniper lead on me. Yeah, okay. I wanted to get to the top of the tower and take cover, but no, that was clearly a bad idea. Okay. Whoa. You! Where the f*** did that come from? Ah! What is with this f cross map aimbot bull? Nope. Ooh, magic gateway. Oh my god! Where the hell are my runes? They're the whole reason I'm here. There's also a magic gate, which is cool. But I'm here for the runes, actually. Ugh. Find me in the Alps, Jesus. Somber smithing stone. Well, that's nice. Let's see where this leads. Probably nowhere good, but who knows. No, still down here. Okay. I just zaps me out here. I don't know what that is. But I don't like it. So much to do, so much to see. So what's wrong with taking the back streets? You never know if you don't go. You never shine if you don't. That's a lot of them. Okay. And they're guarding an Ashes of War Scarab. Great oracular bubble. And a somber smithing stone, and that's it. Thank you, bye. Man, that's pretty. Okay. I guess now we have to go and see what that thing is. I'd really rather not, but... Dragonkin Soldier. Oh my god! Holy f***ing sh Okay, could you guys stand over here and shoot at him? Wow. Me! 
Like, I have the damage to kill him, but... I don't feel like I have the health. Oh my god! Oh, Christ. Oh, poor Torrent. Yeah, no, that... Yeah. Okay, then. He seems optional. Raises attributes, but also increases damage taken. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather not. I'm already dying at like 1.4 hits to this guy. No, he just kills you in one hit, is what he does. That He, ju he just crawls over to you and then you die. Okay. I do have a spirit that's more resistant to physical damage, though. Just my jellyfish boy. And if I could poison him, that would be nice, too, because... Yeah, jellyfish can survive a few hits. Not a full combo, though. Yeah, never had the chance to... Never had the chance. Yeah, it's, it's just this, basically, and then, like, if he hits you one or two times, then you're dead. He doesn't seem to have any good options for if you're behind him, either. Like, he can get around to your side pretty quick, though. Okay, let's just stay at full health, shall we? Yeah, that's the one shot. That's the one hit kill. That's probably also a one-hit kill. Oh, okay. Bit of a binary fight, this. He's deceptively fast with that thing. Okay. Don't grow wings or something. Also, please don't get any new attacks, because I just got used to these ones. Son of a- Son of a- Son of a- Son of a- I can't dodge that! Like, what the hell? Uh, 
Oh my god. That was a little faster than I'd like from him. Yeah, no, 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 no. Okay, Jesus. Me. Hey, the dragon Halbert. Halbert shaped like a dragon and wreathed with both ice and lightning. Alas, the dragonkin soldiers never attained immortality and perished as decrepit pale imitations of their skyborn kin. I would hate to see what he was like in his prime, holy f Ooh. And then you imbue it with lightning? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. I'm I mm, I I could maybe work with that. A few upgrades. Okay. But there's no pillar with the flame thing on it that I need to set on fire around here. Hey, you don't want to throw to me or anything? Like, we just fought a boss that we were probably underleveled for, and you don't think I would have something to say about that? No? Not at all? Well, okay, Pascine, you go get sniped a few dozen more times then, and I will talk to the audience about the thing we just killed with chip damage. And let's do this the simple way. What does the character design tell us about the Dragonkin Soldier? Well, the first thing that jumps out to me is that it is hollow. Like, it's quite literally hollow. Its stomach is a gaping hole showing us that its chest and ribcage are empty voids. And this is a recurring thing in From Software games. In Bloodborne, for example, both the Blood-Starved Beast and the Cleric Beast have these hollowed-out ribcages that look almost empty, and in Dark Souls 2, the Last Giant has a sunken and hollowed-out chest in a similar fashion. In Elden Ring itself, the trolls have similar similarly hollowed out chests, and their hair is made of dry, tangled branches that look rather similar to the dry, tangled branches growing out of the dragonkin's neck. And I can't help but wonder if that implies some kind of thematic connection between them? Do these creatures share some kind of a similar fate? Hmm. Design-wise, hollowing out a chest in that way makes a character skeletal. It approximates a skeleton's empty ribcage. And as such, the visual association here is with death, undeath, decay, and rot. And of course, the connection between death, undeath, and hollowness is another one of those old From Software staples. In Dark Souls, going hollow means losing your interiority, your memories, your wants, your personality, all of the things that fills you up. And I can't help but interpret the Dragonkin Soldier, and indeed the trolls, through that same visual language. In other words, this is a hollow in the Dark Souls sense. This is something which was once complex and alive, and which has been reduced by despair and by decay to nothing but the base impulse for violence. Although it may be moving around, it is effectively a corpse. So, that's what the Dragonkin Soldier looks like it is, but what does it look like it once was? Well, it was a soldier. The clue is in the name there, of course, but you can also tell literally just by looking at it. It wears a suit of armor, falling off though it is, but this is no mere breastplate just strapped to an animal. It is an outfit. There is fashion here. Look at those meticulously wrapped strips of cloth around its legs and arms crossed over one another at regular and specific intervals. Look at the double bracelets on each wrist with what looks like runic script engraved, and most importantly, look at that fine fabric cape it still wears, which is embroidered with 
well, some sort of symbol. I couldn't find anywhere in my footage where I got a good look at it at any point during the fight, but fortunately, the YouTube channel Bonfire VN has a wonderful cinematic video of the Dragonkin Soldier, I've linked it in the description, which lets us get a better look. And the symbol depicts what looks to me like eight dragons, or perhaps eight Dragonkin Soldiers, each thrusting a weapon into the center of a circle that is inside of a bigger circle. And to me, that symbol confirms what the fashion was already implying. The Dragonkin Soldier is not just some pet monstrosity. It's not an unthinking beast dragged along by an army to be unleashed in the general direction of the enemy. This was a thinking person, a soldier. It was a knight of some long-dead order whose principles, one assumes, it must have once believed in. Another thing about the symbol is, doesn't that look awfully kind of familiar? A ring of weapons all thrust into the center of a circle as a signifier of knightly fellowship, as a symbol of a common purpose? I don't know about you, but I am getting the strangest sense of deja vu. Now, the round table has 12 weapons thrust into it, not eight, but the room is ringed by eight statues. And if you look at the designs carved into the table, you will find that same decorated ring marking the perimeter of where the weapons are placed. Eight figures arranged in an equidistant pattern around a decorated circle with weapons thrust into the middle. I'm not about to try and draw any hard conclusions just from this, but the world building of Elden Ring is detail-oriented and meticulous, and I think that these are too many overlaps to just be mere coincidence. We've talked already about how the lands between are full of signs that there was something there before the Golden Order. The roots of the Ur trees clearly intrude on tombs that were here before them. Both Rogier and Muriel outright state that the Golden Order likes to integrate and appropriate heresies into its structure. And then, of course, there's the whole of this Siofra River. Down here, there are no signs of the Golden Order, none of its symbols, fortifications, or flags, and most crucially, no giant Erd tree is dominating the skyline. There is at least one sapling down here, we'll find it later, but it is at best a recent intruder into a world which the Golden Order clearly did not create. So, the Dragonkin Soldier, to me, looks like yet another remnant of the past before the Golden Order, some order or society of dragons that existed here before, and which either fell on its own or was vanquished by the Golden Order. And that history might not even be that ancient, because the Church of Dragon Communion, with a fairly fresh dragon corpse and a pile of beheaded statues, at least implies that a purge of dragon worshippers was carried out recently enough that the ruins have not had time to clear. And no wonder that people would still worship dragons when the miracles of Dragon Communion promise you the power to become one. Which leads us back to the character design of the Dragonkin Soldier, the subject that we ostensibly were supposed to be talking about. It is called Dragonkin, which means that it's related to dragons, but it's not actually a dragon. And the Dragonkin Soldier looks decidedly humanoid. It's hunched over crawling disguises as proportions, but it has a human body layout. Humanoid hips, torso, shoulders, arms, and human hands with six fingers on each. That addition seems to be a minor design theme of the creature. It is a human figure with extra bits added onto it, and perhaps most obviously, you can see that in its two mouths. The Dragonkin Soldier has two jaws and two rows of teeth, almost as though it is two creatures, one layered on top of the other. And I mean, I'm pop culture brain, so my immediate comparison to that is like Venom, a Spider-Man symbiote suit sort of deal, but Elden Ring is inspired by Norse and Germanic mythology, and in Old Norse myth, heroes, gods, and giants could transform into other creatures by wearing their skins. This is where we get berserkers from, berserk, bear shirt, although in practice this was less often a shirt than it was a skin worn over the shoulders and then over the head as a kind of helmet, which, looking at the Dragonkin Soldier, it is actually only its head that has the dragon scales. The hands, the torso, the legs, even the throat, those are all, well, purple, but still human-looking skin. And looking at the Dragonkin Soldier without its armor, the impression that I get is essentially a human figure wearing a dragon helmet. The conclusion we can draw from all of this, or a conclusion that we can draw, is that once upon a time there was a 
dragon order of some kind. It was ruled by dragons, maybe, or perhaps more likely, worshipped dragons, and the greatest soldiers and knights of this order were granted the honor of, well, either consuming a dragon heart, like Dragon Communion does, or perhaps wearing a dragon helmet or a dragon skin, like a berserker, in some way becoming alike to their gods. But alas, as the halberd says, they never achieved immortality, they never became true dragons, and now, centuries after their order has fallen, they linger on as little more than hollow and semi-immortal shells. And perhaps some vestiges of the symbology of this dragon order remains, absorbed into the golden order when it took over. Maybe the act of bringing together the points of weapons at the center of a circle survives as some kind of a gesture of knightly brotherhood and loyalty and common purpose. That, at least, is a read of the Dragonkin Soldier, based on its character design and based on the limited knowledge I have of the game so far. Maybe we will learn more of dragon lore later on down the line, and all of my theorizing here will be laughably disproven. You'll have to keep watching the series in order to find out. Or go watch Vatividia, I guess. I'm sure he has a video about it, but you know, I'm not there yet, so, so stick around with me, and you get to laugh at me when we find out how wrong I am. And that's another episode done, finally. There has been a big gap between episodes, and if you want to stick around through the credits here, I'll tell you why that is. But first, I have to do a little bit of business and do some calls to action. First and foremost, the Boss Designs of Elden Ring is supported by viewers like you. These episodes do not make a lot of ad revenue, especially not compared to the amount of labor hours that it takes to make them. And because I refuse to take sponsorships on this series, the only reason I can sink that much time into making them is because of the support I get on Patreon and on Coffee. So if you have a dollar and you don't need it and you want to help me make these episodes as slowly as I'm doing it, then I would be very grateful to receive the help. A single dollar can be the same as thousands of views, so it makes much more of a difference than you might think. If you can't donate, though, or you just don't want to, that's completely okay. I don't want any money that you need for yourself. I'm just glad you've watched the video this far. As always, you can watch the unedited footage for this series over on my Let's Play channel, Tubi's Gaian. Elden Ring is an open world game, and I have to cut out a lot of footage to make these episodes work, so if you want to see me get lost a bunch and fight a bunch of enemies and fall off some things, that is all over there. I'm also playing Lunacid on the Let's Play channel, by the way, which is a game that is deeply inspired by From Software's Kingsfield series, which was the predecessor to Dark Souls, so maybe you'd be interested in that. That game has immaculate vibes and a hell of a soundtrack. It's worth checking out. Speaking of two bees guy, which has a red icon, there is now also three bees guy, which has a green icon. Three bees guy is my new um, reaction slash rant slash experimental channel, I suppose. And if you want to watch some anime along with me, I am having a lot of fun watching Dungeon Meshi over on that channel. I'm doing it in a watch along format. We're watching the episode at the same time and it's like I'm sitting next to you on the couch and going off on stuff about, oh, that animation is so cool or ranting about the world building and character design. Uh, I'm probably going to start watching Freerun over there as well. So if you're interested in that anime, go, 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 go check that out. Subscribe to that thing also if, uh, if you want more stuff to watch. Anyway, that is all of the calls to action out of the way, so let's talk about why Elden Ring is taking so long. I am struggling a bit. I think, yeah, I think that's probably the word for it. I am struggling uh, these days. As I've talked about before, my ADHD remains unmedicated, and I am being hit really rather hard by trying to adjust to having this diagnosis. And apparently that's pretty normal, like after you get diagnosed, a lot of people will feel like their symptoms get way worse because we stop repressing them all the time and we start learning to try and accommodate them instead. And the thing is, accommodating ADHD symptoms means learning to be willing to be disabled by them. ADHD is a disability, and I have lived basically my entire life catastrophically burning myself out trying to compensate for that disability. And it was really, it was like clockwork. Every year I had at least one really bad crash, like complete burnout. It would take me ages to recover from it, and then immediately, as soon as I felt better, I would overwork myself trying to make up for the time I spent in burnout, and that was a very vicious cycle. Because I have stopped trying to push myself to just work through my symptoms, because 
that was killing me, I'm getting a lot less work done. And because I'm trying to learn habits and coping mechanisms that are actually healthy for me, uh, most of the work that I do has to kind of go towards doing those things. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really just trying to get on my goddamn medication right now. There's some health things that need to be taken care of before I can do that, so I want to get on the medication, figure out how I function on that medication, and then figure out how to do my job on that medication. That's the main thing I'm doing behind the scenes right now, and videos, unfortunately, kind of have to come second to those priorities, which I am trying very hard to learn to be okay with that, and I'm not always succeeding. I, I, f I feel really kind of bad and stressed out about it, but you know, brain things. Anyway, sorry for the vlog. Uh, the point I'm trying to get at here is that the boss designs of Elden Ring is probably going to stay inconsistent, and I don't know when that's going to get better. Once again, I am not going to abandon the series. I am going to finish it. It's just not going to happen very fast. I hope that answers your questions and gives you a little bit of context to why the series is taking so long. So let's play the emoji game. If you have watched the video all the way to the end here, put a spoon emoji in your comment and I will read it and I will put a little heart on it. Thank you very much for your time and your attention. Remember to be kind to one another, have solidarity with those who are struggling and may the tides of history wash gently over us all.